Welcome to the Podness with Face, Pat, and Tiz. I know you big onto the AI shit and to the techie tech shit. Have you did you see where some dude took AI technology and made the um made some of the Simpsons people and the real people? Oh, like um um they did like a realistic version of them, like animatronics. Yeah, they did mostly. Yeah, like um like with the um so like real what skin call these AI bot. Yeah, like with these ana, ana, these um robots, motherfuckers, like okay, real so skin yeah, and shit. Animatronics. Yeah, like they have like uh, um, museums and shit. Some like some like that. We know how to love the new androids. Like what's that? What's that bitch that got citizenship? Sophia. Yeah. Yeah, looking Sophia. looking like her. That. Mm. Yeah. So they got most lids with Oh, okay. They got most Sizzlack out this bitch. And when I say that's always what I pictured Mo to look like as a human being, they got that shit spot on with Mo says like yo, like high faces. He's an ugly nigga. Yeah, he that's is. Motherfucker. <laughs> they had a whole episode about that. They had a whole episode about <laughs> ugly him is. being. Yeah. Oh. Okay. Mo says like out this bitch. <laughs> Mo says like huge Simpsons guy. So it's a lot that I've missed in there over the years, but. Yeah, and, I used to yeah. be big on Simpsons, man, and I straight away when Family Guy came in, and I straight away from Family too. Guy, I just got off TV. Like, I, I air now and then I go try to catch a Family Guy episode on YouTube or some shit, but that's very rare in between. Mm, it's very rare. I found myself trying to watch more um older cartoons and shit, Jetsons and shit like that, trying to catch up on that old shit. I fuck with most Simpsons because he's. Hey, man! You know, and preparation like for the a, party tonight. A small business owner. Who a small business owner? <laughs> Hold on, what happened? <laughs> this nigga. What happened? Most is like. What? Most is like. He's oh, a small what business owner. Geeking on? <laughs> what happened? I put. I don't know. I don't <laughs> know. Listen, I put. <laughs> I put the two conversations together. I put y'all two conversations together. You was like, Captain K, man. And he was like, yeah, he's a small business owner. I was like, Captain K, man, small business owner. Ah, <laughs> oh, got it. Okay. <laughs> I can see this nigga with the tie and shit on. I can see this nigga with the tie and shit on. Yes, Captain K, man, rental cars. <laughs> Captain K. <laughs> Yo, I bet you don't rental cars will be smashing into everything. And, and Captain K, man, go for it. Go for a business owner. He can't go in the bank for a minute long. I bet you. <laughs> I bet you his car do more damage than them actually, you know, <laughs> total and stuff. I don't think you can total oh them. God. They made out of pure. I would assume not. Wood. <laughs> I would assume not. Oh my god! So oh, like hey. they driving around in a in a steamroller. <laughs> Mm, mm. Big ass wood thing, bro. Somebody must be talking uh, about me. Why? Your ears itching and shit. Uh, my eye twitching. Like Nigga, that means you got a style. That ain't got shit to do with no damn. Nigga, that is pink. Oh, I don't know what they mean. Your eye twitching. That is pink. I'm looking in the camera so I can see. That's pink. That look crazy as shit. <laughs> oh my god. Yo. Yo, this is gonna be a good show tonight, man. I got that feeling. I got that feeling. Hey, that funky feeling. DJ Cool is in the house of people in the house. Hey. Hey, 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 I got that feeling. Hey, that hey, that funky feeling. DJ Cool is in the house. Southeast, southeast, southeast.
Southeast, South, Southeast, Southeast, South, Southeast. If you riding the road, we know what it is. We don't have no dogs, bro. Oh, all right. I used to be my shit back in the day, boy. Nigga beat the shit yeah, out of feet. Down, uh-huh. Nigga feet be about to break. Bust a hill. What? Yeah, I was watching some video. It's very, it's very rare that we watching music videos. Shit, but caught niggas hill towing. I was like, oh, brought back memories. I remember the hill toe was my well, shit. I was a hill towing oh. somebody, boy. I was hill towing any damn thing. <laughs> hill what? towing a whole shit. One leg, he hit that one leg hill <laughs> toe. Like niggas can't hit this one leg shit. Well, hit the yeah, one they, leg hill toe. Hit the inverse on their ass, boy. Oh man, put mm-hmm. out my mm-hmm. shit right there, what? boy. I have my damn cut up jeans on. You just get the sl- swaying in the damn beat. Oh man, you can't that, tell me shit. Man, back in the day, back in You're the day, the fucking king of the dance hall. <laughs> <laughs> king of the dance hall, nigga. Wouldn't think that was almost twenty years ago. <laughs> tell you what, man. Jeez. Tell you what, it definitely was. <laughs> yes, it was. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Oh, but I'm glad to make it this far. I hope we make it 2020 more, man. Amen. Yes, amen, indeed. Amen. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. I look to be 20 years from now having memories on this conversation. Like, remember, remember when we was on the podcast? Him and remember, remember about the dance and the shit? Well, guess what, man? We're going to make sure we had that. Welcome to the Damn podcast right. with Bass, Pat, and Tiz. What's up, guys? Yeah, I know who that is. <laughs> Welcome to the podcast. Show with three oh, friends man. separated by distance, but connected by brotherhood, having weekly conversations that you can join in on. As always, I'm one third of the partners. It's your motherfucking boy, T, and I'm along with. Oh shoot! They shooting. Ah, oh, I'm sorry. PTSD. Um, it's Padawan here. The other third of the partners. I'm I'm eating gummy bears, and I think there's something in them. And I really like it. <laughs> and I'm along with What's that? And what's that? And what's that? And that's your boy face in the place, man. I'm here. What's up? <laughs> what's happening? This is episode bit. 64. We don't know what we're going to call the chat, but you will see when we put this bitch out. What's happening, motherfucker? How y'all doing this week, guys? Shit, I can't complain, brother. I cannot complain. Head on straight, shoulders forward, back, chest out, brain correct. I'm ready for conquering this week, man. What's up? Nigga, you standing at attention, ain't it? Back, you know it. He said okay, back and forth. We, there we go. I was like, why the hell every time I turn my head the damn sound for sound fun that shit won't plug in all the way. Okay, now we cooking with motherfucking gas. All right. All right. Let me adjust this. All right. Hi, uh, how is everybody week doing? How, how we doing this week, fellas? Everybody feeling all right? Me personally. All right, I'm doing Gucci, man. Can't complain. Um, everybody in the family had this little stomach bug that was going around with. We all good now. Um, Amen to that. So, everybody focus on the recovery and just getting stronger and getting better. That's about it, man. I'm here. And real quick, Pat, before, uh, before I swing it to you, Pat, um, people out there, please remember that outside of COVID, it's still other shit that still can get you. Like, there's still colds and flus and just stomach bugs. Mm-hmm. Like, random shit you know like it's still other shit that was there before covid hit that still is out there so like maintain your health on a daily basis don't wait till you catch some shit to, like in between it, it'll help you when you do catch some shit to go ahead and be like all right shake that shit the fuck on off but yeah remember that i'm sorry How you and, re- going, Pat? and remember that covid is popular within all the other sicknesses because they seem to go along every time you hit somebody with Something else, COVID is there to support the sickness along the way. Then, Just remember that, that shit didn't sound like a damn insurance commercial. Every time a sickness, COVID comes is along, there. COVID is there. <laughs> what the fuck? Yo, it's sad when COVID journey. permeated society to the point where that shit is like a friendly neighborhood. Just you know, you go out to take out your trash. 
Hey, COVID. <laughs> hey there. Hey, hey, nigga. <laughs> Dear um, insurance companies, if you need this voice for your commercial, I'm here for a price. You got your boots. Cool. <laughs> Double Vax Pack is here for you. Well, uh, not for glad, not for the Omicron, though. Please. I'm glad everybody's doing well. Uh, but uh, we did have a, a, a bit of a rant <clears throat> that uh, Brother Face <clears throat> wanted to start us off with before we oh, get yes. to the actual oh, conversation. Yes. So, uh, oh, swing yes. it to you, Face! Oh. Yes, here we go. Um, right, so last so week I brought up, um, I brought once again my love for cannabis and that every week I'll be bringing something to the table, cannabis related. So this week um, I was reviewing mm-hmm. two bills that's been in Virginia, specifically one being brought um, by the Republicans and another being brought by the Democrats, um, both with marijuana um, being the targets of these new bills. Um, I'm not really going into focus what the bills are on this week. I'll do that next week or probably during the week. I'll give y'all a video on that one. But right now, I'm just going to give you my focus points on what the government should be focusing on with these bills and especially on states and localities that they're trying to get it fully legal and just work out all the kinks with cannabis. Um, first one that I, um, as I read bills and just go over different policies, there's no true established in-home quantity that's allowed. Um, I see on some new bills, they want to amp it up to four pounds allowed. Some places... Um, if you're on federal assistance, you have no allowance in your pl- in your domicile, but some places have a few ounces, so it's all different. Um, I think it should be an established in home quality. Um, when, of course, when cannabis becomes fully regulated um, on the federal level, hopefully that's statewide. I mean, countrywide, what the established in home quantity is. But for right now, state to state, for all states that are legal, I think it should be one established um, home quantity. Um, second thing, I, um, I don't think as much as four pounds, but I think it should be between one and two, one and two pounds as far as in home quantity. Um, if you're growing, depending on what you're growing and what time of year you're growing, some of your plants can produce a, a lot more so if you're just sitting on that or if you're just growing for personal use you may have up to that month quantity but if you're like if you're trying to like start a business more talk about like for the growers more than like people just sitting on mm-hmm. just because I got yeah you seem like to... yeah you seem like um more restrictions like when we get down further on the list i'm talking about more restrictions as far as um not even restrictions just set forth established rules and set for the personal allowances versus the grow allowances because there's going to have to be some differential differentials because everyone's not going to be a grower. Um, everyone want to be may want to testify themselves. Yeah. Everyone, oh yeah, I'm going. I have this many plants, but it should be an established um, growth rate or established amount of plants that should be there before you can classify yourself as a true grower to get certain grants from the government. But that's what it doesn't matter. Number three, just uh, establish limits on promotion and um, just media promotion of the plant. Um, just like with alcohol, you don't see many promotions. I think it should be the same, same, same limitations on cannabis. Um, uh, just like you don't want to advertise it to all age ranges with alcohol, same thing with that as well. Um, it is uh, it does intoxicate you. It does have its medical benefits as well, but you don't want everybody, anybody to have their hands on it. So I say limit have established limits on the amount of promotion that can be made by public. Um, okay. Next thing, I believe it should be clear restrictions on where where it can be sold and how much can be sold in those places. And with the restrictions, um, include limits on the taxation. Uh, just in regular, in regular retail, um, just going to store to store, you see different amount of taxes on the same amount of same item. Um, it was a video somebody put up about a bottle of water, about how the different bottle, bottle, how much the price of the bottle of water changes based on the locale you're in. It shouldn't be that way. You know I mean? So it should be a set limit on, okay, this is how much you can tax it. No more than this, no less than this when it comes to the flower. Um, restrictions based on where it can be sold. You don't want it sold close to schools. You don't want it sold um, by certain campuses, maybe depend on the the surrounding community. But clear, clear established rules and restrictions on, on that type of stuff. So 
when people do want to get into the business, they have a clear mindset. Okay, I can establish my business here and won't be putting myself in no risk of losing my business or getting any fines. Um, fifth thing. Um, business grants should be readily accessible for small businesses trying to get into the market versus large businesses. Um, we find that, especially in this industry, big businesses have it a lot easier because they already have the money and the capital to buy in and get the large plants and get the the, the fields and get the different technicians and labs do whatever they do where you have small businesses trying to scrape by and just get, try to get some seeds to get on the ground. Um, well, if we have business grants readily available to small businesses, they'll have a leg up. And I feel like in this industry, giving small small businesses a leg up would be great because just being a brand new industry and you have a lot of minority families and it's just one number of people trying to get into this business, you have a chance to establish wealth if you give them a chance to. Um, okay. Six hey, thing, please. Can I, can, go before ahead. you go to number six, can I ask a question about number four? About the tax? Yeah. Anyone? All right, so with yeah. the tax agent one, <laughs> um, all right, I, I I feel you on like having a restriction on like how much how high the tax can be, so like it have like a cap on it basically. But do you mm -hmm. think it'll ever be possible, at least in the meantime, until weed is completely legal federally or weed is completely legal nationwide? Do you think it is really possible to for them to have like? closer to equal taxes from location to location based off their, I guess, uh, proximity to growers or proximity to like, you know, a product chain. I mean, if we view it as, if, if we view it as something like as tobacco, cause, um, you look at tobacco, Virginia's a big tobacco state. So being everything I'm talking about based in Virginia right now, cause that's my locale. Um, Tobacco is taxed twice in the state. Um, everybody, if you don't know those who don't smoke tobacco, I do smoke tobacco. I'm trying to quit. If you turn your cigarettes upside down, most likely it's one or two stamps on the on the bottom of your um, cigarette pack. Both of those stamps is a tax stamp. It's taxed two times. Um, certain limitations put towards that make, it guarantees revenue to different facilities in different parts of the, of the state. Whatever, whatever. Something like that with marijuana, I feel it'd be cool. You feel me? Like you got your certain limits, you know, okay, it has to it has to go through these processes. If not, we break and we we violate. And we all know when it comes to taxes and stuff, IRS ain't gonna let shit slip because they're very diligent. So I believe yes, anything you get the IRS yes, I believe if you get them involved in anything or any process, the process will run a lot smoother <laughs> because Boy, they are diligent about their money. Anybody, put the IRS on their ass. So, I mean, uh, they're putting certain limits on taxation, but trying to make it uniform, that the uniformity will be the hardest thing. With the limits, I believe, the limits as far as how much will be the easiest thing. Cause that, okay, they can get that done easy. Okay, we don't want to go over this much. Great. But now we got to make it uniform. So, I feel finding the uniformity in the tax taxation of cannabis will be the hardest the hardest part of that. But I still believe it needs to be done. Um, the next thing, please, please restrict the amount of big pharma involvement. They should be allowed to aid in research, especially for the medical side, but they should not be allowed to have nothing to do with laws or making medical or making practices of our laws I with cannabis. That on a whole bunch of shit. Yep. yep. Yeah, keep going. Um, like, big pharma, um, like just from what I'm seeing now, um, I plan on making a video or just bringing it to the pocket. I don't know how I want to format it, but just now before flour is becoming uh, becoming legal you have so many different types of flour becoming public and becoming legal to the public now where you have delta a delta nine and now t-a-c-o um t-a-c-o is supposed to be the closest thing to actual t-a-c flour being five times um is strong five times stronger than delta eight where delta eight already had people hallucinating and going through all this other stuff um all this other fucking with the plant Stop. <laughs> just, just stop, man. Like, keep the plant in its purest forms. I mean, I can understand you want to try this and want to make it different potencies, but cool, but you take away from the purity of it. And that's why a lot of people smoke marijuana because the purity of it, it comes from the earth. It, I mean, it ain't too much man involvement in it. But when you start putting a lot of man involvement in it, you're going to ruin yeah. a lot of things about that, man. Please, yeah, big farmer. That. That's when you A with that's medical. Like a drug, drug, as opposed to like. Exactly. Uh, 
And then, exactly. and then he gets oh, fit and all into the substance. shit. Exactly. Yeah, that's you feel me? people that practice that it's easier for them to have like fentanyl in a in a batch because they're trying mm-hmm. to do a little bit more. Come on, fentanyl. So, mm-hmm. yeah, no. Fenton, fenton. Fentanyl um, is the one that is like a pinch of it or something would like kill somebody and it's like a powdery thing. Mm-hmm. And then uh, fentanyl mm-hmm. is what oh, oh no, that's propyl. Mm-hmm. I think it's fentanyl though. Talking about the, like, the shit that uh, I, I like the rappers been dropping dead off. The little pout, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah little, that's fentanyl. Yeah. 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 Little yeah. pinch of fentanyl. Mm-hmm. That, that shit is the motherfucking Cause, rapper killer. Because I'm like, I hear I hear him say, because I know I'm already fucking up other names. I've heard it say fentanyl. I heard it say fentanyl. <laughs> oh. yeah. You know, grammar police is here to get you. <laughs> you know it. They know seven and six, they run and coincide together. I'm on number seven. You should be standardized growing practices with restriction on chemical use that enhance the potency of, of the flower. Um, Amen. You're going, you're going too far. It, 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 you don't need to be but so potent. Like, what you're going for now is you're trying to find the, the higher high or the, the most and most trying to add these little chemicals or trying to enhance this particle of it. Don't. Leave it alone. It was good before you got your hands on it. Don't put your hands on it. Just do what you need to do for the people to be allowed to get it. That's it. Too much chemicals, you ruin something, man. Like, damn. Yeah. Moving on. Number eight. Now, when it comes to the regulation and different um, authorities, I believe everyday regular people should be able to join and apply to sit on these boards like the the CCA or the Cannabis Control Authority. Um, I believe normal cannabis users should be able to participate in the lawmaking practices and regulation practices as well, processes. Um, I always believe that who who else better should be able to help make the laws about a substance than people who use a substance. Um, that comes on all levels with everything. Uh, you really don't know how crackhead thinks if, you feel me, you never experienced it or never been around or something like that. You just making laws of a th- of a of a, of a guess. And I ask a question on that because I feel like you've thought about mm-hmm. it definitely more than me. Uh, with the weed though, seeing as though you have different types of uses, like with crack, if you smoking crack, you're smoking it strictly to get high off the crack. You ain't smoking it to like mm-hmm. help you ease no pain or deal with no trauma or no remedy, nothing. You know what I mean? You're not using it medicinally. Mm-hmm. Like with marijuana being like something that can be used medicinally or just because I want to get as high as I can be. How do how mm-hmm. do you think that that the marijuana community would ever be able to come together to actually like create laws that they could agree on, especially when it comes sure. to um as far as like usage restrictions, um personal versus commercial. Oh yes. Yeah. Oh yeah, like definitely. That. Because um through my experiences with marijuana, nothing has brought people together that I know of like marijuana. Um, some of the some of the weirdest people I've met or know that I wouldn't talk to on my normal everyday basis. Once we get together on the common topic of mar- uh, marijuana or cannabis, I should say, um, there's a lot of agreements. Um, our our purposes and or main purposes behind usage. That's how me and face became friends. <laughs> yeah, if we miss, I mean, like so, just just that. I mean, it's a lot. Of, we may have a lot of differences of why we use. But when it comes to the regulation of it, I see that a lot of people from different backgrounds, they agree on a lot of the process and a lot of rule making things because they all want safety. They all want it to be regulated to have um, less government involvement as possible. Um, the, the, the extra potencies, a lot of people don't want that. Um, people who just want to smoke, want to smoke. People who want to smoke because they need it for medicine, cool. But at the end of the day, I see a lot of them on agreement as far as, like I said, just the pure policy of it. So I think that if you have like just with anything in life, if you have a kaleidoscope of different people together, one mind is better than one mind is better. Two minds better than one, I should say. Um, we have a multitude of opinions. You can come together even by just getting those opinions out there because you can find synchronicity and, and different things. It's just about looking at them and voicing them together. That's real. 
That's real. Now, my number nine, and I, and I feel like I hold this whole hardly, and this is a hill I won't get off of. Wholesale and retail industries it should be limited on what and how much they can sell. They should be heavy, heavy restrictions on big box companies, so that small companies and um, small businesses have room to flourish. Um, key example, everybody sells toys. Toys are rustling out of business. I feel what you're saying. You so like, uh, don't, don't wait. Antitrust and anti-monopoly laws in the... Uh, mm-hmm. Gotcha. Mm-hmm. You feel me? Like, give a lot of room for small businesses to flourish. Um, I see a lot of real small um, CBD Delta 8 shops popping up, but most of them are owned by families, owned by the same people. That ain't no problem. Cool. Y'all have a multitude of businesses, y'all franchise it. But when it comes to, okay, now Walmart sells pounds of cannabis for this this price and it has a rollback price on it. Yeah. Who's gonna go to the mom and yeah. pop store? Who's gonna go they they're gonna go to get that rollback price. Yeah, they're gonna go, okay. They Amazon, they have been you, in the store. You, uh, <laughs> you feel me? Like fuck mom and pop. You feel me? Like who gonna go to the dispensary if I can go, oh shit, I can just go on the computer and get it from Amazon. I can get these two pounds from Amazon. That's my limit to keep anyway, boom. No. You feel me? You gotta go to get that my thing is purchasing to me, purchasing marijuana and cannabis has always been an experience. And now that it's becoming legal, the whole experience has changed and that should be an ex- like that should be an experience. You feel me? You should go into the place and actually seeing the different varieties, actually talking to what they call a bud tender now and being informed about the differences because a lot of people don't know it's different differences in marijuana. They don't know it's indica and sativa, they just think it's loud. No. That's not what it's called. Nope. That's just street name. Loud. You, you actually educate loud yourself on what you're putting into your body. You feel <laughs> me? Like educate yourself. It, it, it once was a time where uh, everything everything was not as strong. It was was a time when indica was that that new that new thing. You did. You feel me? Like that endo. Like come on, man. Like people nowadays they just smoking because of the fad. Like I I love the product. You feel me? Like I've always been a a. a a marijuana and cam- cannabis advocate to where, like I tell everybody, I'm invested in it. I'm invested in the stock market with it. So I, when it grow, I'm going to grow with it. So I believe, like I said, it's going to be the next ca- one of the next cash crops. It just has to be fully regulated and, and for the government to afford to do what it needs to do. The government just has to hands and hands in it for so much. I don't like that part as far as government having its hands all in it, but this is America, and what else can you do? But that's my little cannabis rant for this week, man. Well, I ain't mad at it. I definitely think that the uh, taxes and shit that's raised from it would definitely be do some good in the uh, in the communities. Uh, it's a lot of communities that can definitely use some revenue from that. So uh, I ain't mad oh at yeah, it. one thing yeah, I did miss. One thing I did miss, man. Um, I think they should establish like um, because you know those people on federal assistance in Virginia or those people on federal assistance in the states where you can grow marijuana at, personally, if you're on federal assistance, you can't do that because, of course, it's not federally legal. It's only on state level. Um, for those places, I believe there should be like a, a land lease program for those people on federal assistance so they can try to build their own wealth and get themselves off federal assistance because we all know there is room to make money in the marijuana, marijuana industry if you are growing and have the agri- agricultural knowledge. So I believe with that land lease program, they should have agriculture classes to protect people's growing knowledge so you can try to build for yourself and get yourself off that federal assistance. Because if you can make yourself wealthy, who would choose to be on federal assistance if you can make yourself wealthy? No, no lies detected there. You ain't lying. I want to get wealthy. That would be very good. No fuckery. Need money. But um, I was looking at my watch, and I think it's about that time. Ooh, I got on my Broncos watch, and it's definitely about that time. Well, shit. If y'all think it's about that time, and I um. Uh... And I done figured out why my light just went out. I think it's about time then. Yeah. And you don't. Because there's one name fuckery on the over the top of God. It's the God of the Rain!
episode just... 64 on these hoes. So... Episode 64, Nintendo 64, the one with Mario is like, you know, 3D and stuff. That was the best one. That was the best one. Good and fuckery. We're going to start off with some good um, hometown hero. Missy Elliott sets new records as the first female rapper to have all six of her albums certified platinum. R-I-A-A. Certified yeah, platinum. All day. The most sure among... I need to do this, but yeah, yeah, I think you got it right there. Right. Yeah, yeah. You are right yeah. So, Virginia is always setting, setting their presence around. Let's you know go, Virginia. Saying? You know, you know. Since we bring it up, Virginia, I'm going to just go ahead and bring it up. Push the T coming out. Got a new song, Diet Coke. Um, he was he, he did say that he in his new album, it's going to be a lot more concepts than a normal drug based concepts. But Coke Diet is Coke, in the title. Yes, yes. But, you know, he had to hit him with his baseline fan, fan base, so to speak. I I see mm-hmm. what you did there. <laughs> if you know, you know. Keith Henning <laughs> told me that. But in some more music news, um, Rock and Roll Hall of Fame 2022. Uh, we got the Tribe Called Quest, uh, Lionel Richie, Dolly Parton. And uh, Eminem slided into the nominations for this year. And, you know, last year it was LL Golly. and um, Jay-Z. Oh, golly. I like a pretty good cool line up there. I, I can't really hate on it too much. I don't know with Dolly P, like man. everybody on there, but I understand why they're there. I fucks with Dolly P. Dolly Double D P. Oh. Um, <laughs> Dolly like, Parton, Ooh. yeah. <laughs> Uh, I, DDP. Oh, I was just messing up names again. I bet you do fuck with. This is the DDP. Got <laughs> a DDP. DDI. Throw the diamond up. <laughs> you ever seen that movie in um, 9 to 5 with Dolly Parton? I mean, who? That oh, movie yeah. 9 to 5 with Dolly Parton when they kidnapped the ball. I've, I've not nine seen the actual the movie, th- but I've heard like the, yeah. the, the little song. And shit. Yeah, that's the. Yeah, that's a, that's a theme song of the movie. <laughs> Working nine to five. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I remember that job. Yeah, you remember that job? <laughs> that nigga. You was you was tuned in to it. Nah, yeah, I, don't, I, I do remember movie. they used to play that probably on a USA or something. <laughs> you know Working what? You nine to like five. Well, that do sound like a mm-hmm. USA uh, movie that they put on on like a Saturday or Sunday afternoon. Like in that weird stuff. Mm-hmm. You know, them are TDS or TNT. Probably TNT. One of them turn of stations. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, um, I'm going to go, matter of fact, let me go up since this is music involved. Dr. Dre, you know the halftime show is coming up. You know what I'm saying? They have, we got, got Snoop, Eminem, halftime. Mary J. He is doing the halftime show. For, I don't know that I really for, want. Um, Super Bowl. I don't know that I really want that. Yeah, we'll see. I, well, we'll, I, I, we'll see. I'm not. I'm not really intrigued by this at all. Well, there's one thing I'm intrigued about because, um, and I'm trying to figure out how this works. But uh, he added two deaf rappers to Big Game's halftime show lineup, and. Um, I'm trying to said, see how that deaf rappers, as in I cannot yes. hear. Yes, as a I cannot hear, not deaf jam, but D E A F. Oh, this is about to be fire! You know they got to be hard as shit if they deaf as fuck and they got a deal. They they got to be fucking amazing. So I'm down. <clears throat> I'm down. I, I'm down to well, just the- see how they pull this all like with with that how they work the mechanics of I'm, like. I'm- being on beat and on cue and shit. That'll be cool. I'm trying to figure this out myself because uh but this will say the uh for the first time in its history, two deaf famous musicians, Sean Forbes and 
Warren Wawa Snipe will perform and why sign why, performing why, why your name after during the, the halftime show. After the club. Why, why, sir? Why is it Wawa? Is he from... Is Yo, from Wawa country? has... Or from another ethnicity? Um, that doesn't sound... No, nah, like he's black. Really Americanized name. Yeah, he might be black, but like, is he from an African or a country of another... Like, where, where is this Wawa coming from? Tell me you're not named after the fucking place. Man, I think that's from the hood, because... I don't think he's after that. I think this his name is Warren, and you know. Oh, uh, wow, wow. I don't know. <laughs> that sounds fucking stupid. Mm-hmm. I'm sorry. That was uh, yep. Black dude. Um. Um. Yeah, I just want to know how this is gonna how that is gonna work, but I guess we'll see when it happens. I guess at so. the halftime. Right. It's gonna be interesting. I'm definitely gonna be tuned in to the Super Bowl, and uh, I got my Super Bowl predictions coming this week. Yeah, I, th- I think I think I got it pretty damn. Dum, I, got dum, dum. I got a score and everything for y'all, so uh, stay tuned for that. It'll be a little quick hit later on this week, but I definitely got my predictions on this game, and uh, I think that's how I'm gonna st- start my little entrance into this uh, sports sports world here. So yeah. <laughs> But yeah, yeah, it's hard to be good. That's a good way. Super Bowl. Nothing else. <laughs> last year, it's said, like uh, I want to. Like I, I, I want really want to see Dr. Dre and Snoop. <laughs> but a weekend crazy. So yeah, but going from music into the film, uh, part of it. Um, okay. Denzel Washington is extends this record as the most Oscar nominated black actor of all time. Now, I will say with that stipulation or what, whatever, he get nominated um, for. Um, I guess it would probably be. Did he get nominated for something new? Hmm. What performance did he get nominated for that's new? I believe- or I'm just asking, is that what? Made them print the story all the way. Oh, he um he earned a nod at Best Actor for the tragedy of Macbeth that hit select theaters on Christmas on uh, stream okay. on Apple TV. Got so it. That's okay, one of the things I thought it was going to be like a bi- it wasn't like a big budget to theater thing. Now that makes sense why I didn't see a lot of promo. For it. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Salute to Denzel, man. But, um, I don't know what that means. Yeah, this is a tip off. Oscar nominated black actor of all time. Um, but yeah. Yeah, that's. I don't know. I, I feel like. I kind of feel like that goes without saying because of the way Hollywood filters out how many blacks they have out at one time. Yeah. Yeah. I kind of I, I, I feel like that like he he's, would he's one of their like, kind of goes by they, default. They, they just gotten used to, so they just you know. Mm-hmm. I, I don't I don't know how I feel mm-hmm. about that. I guess that the title like of the black actor of all time, like yeah, if he was doing it and it was like okay, he's the most nominated Oscar, uh, the most Oscar nominated actor of all time. I guess that would hold more weight to me or make me feel a little better in my spirit. I don't know. Something about that title just mm-hmm. bothered me. I don't even, I don't know. I can't all the way articulate it. Because it sounds like, that, like uh, out of all the black actors, he has the most now. That's what it sounds like. That's what it is. Talking, like. nigga. Yeah. Ah, I don't know. All right. <laughs> it's like I feel yeah, good for him. Uh, I fuck with Denzel, but it's just. Because it's him, you know. Yeah, it's just weird. I don't know. <laughs> I'm with you, though. <laughs> Something else uh, weird that we're about to get into into the film world. The Color Purple reboot. Do we need a reboot of that? No, we don't. We absolutely don't. There's a lot of everything don't need, need a, a fucking before. sequel or a reboot or a rehash or a redo or let me try this one more again or let me do this with other actors or let me man fuck it. I, I we don't need this. Like, now, I'm good. 
Man, got that. If shit the stress if we out. put it if we put it in a sense like if I if we take the color purple like a Broadway play and um it's one of and we're like honoring it like that, like it's uh Yeah, if you, like you, you know how Broadway is always it's not a play though. It's a film. No, don't give me that. Or whatever. I don't want that again. Like, I already got the, the classic moments I needed. I got the, you ain't my mammy, and uh, you show is ugly, and uh, God's trying to tell you something. Like, I, I didn't got all that. And who this woman? And uh, I got all that already. Like, I don't need that. I don't want that. Please stop, y'all. Please. Hollywood. Hollywood. Stop fucking up my childhood. Hollywood slay. I just want my childhood. Please <laughs> stop fucking up my childhood. Please. Have you seen my childhood? <laughs> oh shit. <laughs> oh man. Um. So, who's in it? Danielle Brooks. Um. People might be familiar with her from the Peacemaker show. Which is actually surprisingly a good show, but we'll I'll talk about that later. Um, Fantasia Taylor, she's in it. Um, Coleman Domingo, I believe he he was actually in the um, Cowboy Bebop show that was on Netflix, and Hallie Bailey, also Hallie, Taraji Mary, P. Hallie, Henson. Um, he actually said beast there. I fucked that lyric up. But go ahead, Pat. I'm <laughs> dumb shit. He, he's good. <laughs> uh, uh, we got uh Taraji P. Henson de- and uh Corey Hawkins and the um uh wait, I got a picture of him. I know he Corey Hawkins. I've seen him before. I don't know who that is. Yeah, where and this and this all for what movie again? The Color Purple reboot. The reboot of Color Purple. Oh, and then it's gonna have mm-hmm. the R and B singer Her. You know, H E R. I like her. Mm-hmm. I didn't even know she was an acting. All right. Mm-hmm. Wow. I, I, yeah. I wish it was in another vessel. So I don't we'll, need we'll, to see we'll the prequel. We'll, I, I I don't need to see the, the prequel, the, the sequel. I don't need none, none. Leave the fucking greatest comedy alone. Well, I know who Celia gonna be because she was Celia. Fantasia was Celia on hot on the in the play. So I'm assuming that's who Celia is. I'd love to know who Hallie, what? Bailey, and uh. Her and Taraji gonna play like what characters they about to be like? Who the hell is Sophia? I believe so. Who punching the white Sophia. man? Uh, Who stomping the cold field? Like I about think you um, Danielle. You told why I bought the EB. <laughs> Who the fuck got the call? Danielle Brooks has played uh, <laughs> Oprah's character. I know I've seen it. Before. I'm a grown man. You fucking wild. Leave I, I, the I, I, I color think purple. The ed- you fuck alone. Leave the color purple. Be fuck alone. I don't care how many stars you throw in it. Leave it alone. Please leave it alone. Who gonna be Mr. Daddy? Who gonna be the short ass daddy? Talking about some shit. Who 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 will do that? Show you game. what, if you're going to redo it, make sure that the advice that's given to Harpo instead of beat her, make it be eat her. I think that would be way more hilarious that she comes stomping through that cone field talking about, you hold, you told Harpo to eat me. And then she's sitting there, her leg shaking. <laughs> and she got a grin on her face instead of a scowl. Yeah, lady. This, y'all gonna fuck up movies, man. Just be original. Come up with new shit. Damn. Be great. I'm looking to remake shit with new motherfuckers. Leave the classics alone. 
Like, the classics for a reason. You trying to taint the motherfucking classics with these new motherfuckers? Or you just you know what, unoriginal? Though. You can't hear the new shit. The fuck? As much as we hate it. On the flip side, to play devil's advocate. Technically, that's literally all that people have been doing for years. Like the playwrights of old were doing mm-hmm. telling the stories that have been retold and written and the myths and the stories of their era. And then those that's- plays got rewritten and told in a different way, but it was pretty much the same story. It was just, oh, I'm going to change the name mm-hmm. of the and put them in a more current setting. So it was basically like yeah, a bunch of reboots. Romeo and must die. And whatnot. So it's almost like they're mm-hmm. doing, they've been doing the same thing. It's just it's getting more annoying. And you know what I got to say to that shit? fucking childhood. So stop it. Leave my you know what I got to say to that shit? Skip an era. I don't give a fuck what they used to do. <laughs> I'm alive now. Don't do that shit with my shit. I don't give a fuck what they used to do. Okay. <laughs> cool for them. Mr. Playwright, we do. Don't fuck with the movies I love. God damn. You think I, think, I, I don't I don't give a fuck about the new generation wanting to see the movie and the new rendition. Fuck it. Look at the shit on VHS. You don't know what a VHS is, go research what a VHS is. Matter of fact, they got everything on DVD, yeah. Blu-ray, yeah. Now, yeah. Yeah. shit. They, yeah. It's on it's streaming on everything. God damn. Leave the fucking shit alone. I'm I'm like as long as as long as black people is handling the the movie, I give it more leeway. Um Nah, and I'm that. trying to look at it as like how Broadway plays do, because that's what they do. They, they, the classics, they get the actors of the time and then they get them to play it. So I'm wondering if they treat it like that, I guess that's okay. But Yo, B, leave that time, shit on Broadway, B. I'll put it like this. The movies that I would love for them to redo, motherfuckers never want to touch. Like the movie with Sidney Poitier and Bill Cosby, let's do it again. You feel me? Redo that mm. shit. Re- redo that. It's, it's possible that y'all can do that with a good ass comic and Redo you feel like, damn, do some like that. Redo the bullshit. Don't redo the classic. The classic is classic for a reason. But boom. Bullshit. I like that idea. Redo that the suck. bullshit. Boom. Some shit that sucks. Boom. Redo that. Make that into something good. But don't fuck up the shit that was or, already great for me. Or some shit that sucks. Or can't be redone, let, Marvel, no. let Marvel get with Robert Townsend and redo. Media man under Marvel, boom. I don't think Robert Downey is gonna want that because he's gonna because then that means his character creation gonna be owned by Disney. Oh yeah, and, uh, yeah. Disney owns yeah. every damn thing. Get that bread, fuck that. Media man ain't making no money now. Shit, <laughs> that's true. Yeah. That's it's been, true. It's been a minute since the Golden Lords generated some gold coin. Or Golden or, Lords or. <laughs> or do this, make a movie um, with the the black superheroes that they movie flop like Blank Man, Media Man, make them in a the movie together. You feel me? But a newer rendition like they like they they own the Avenger Force. Of, you feel me? Great value Avenger. Media Man, all the great value Avenger. Media Man, come out there <laughs> shooting laser eyes. Take <laughs> a Blank Man, throw a boot. <laughs> <laughs> but think oh, that a comic book is a media value. Think that a comedic value. Think that a comedic value. I'm serious, yo. Like, like, like a gangster movie, and then it was like the Golden Lords. I might be able to watch. I'll watch that. Yeah, that would be cool. The Golden Lords. I might be able to watch. I'll watch that. Yeah, like a like a gangster like Golden Lords movie. Yeah, you might, give me the Golden Lords in the New Jack City format. Like where it's like that Ooh. type of format, like a gritty, Ooh. like a gritty Golden Lord. I'd watch that, mm-hmm. but not the exact same rehashing of media. No, like I would take no, that no, no, no. That's why I'm, like that's what I'm talking about. You, it. Just, you just focus on them characters. That would, on it. Mm-hmm. that would be hard. That would be hard. You got a bunch of kid soldiers running around the city, fucking people up. That would be we'll go, a different thing for somebody to deal with. But who would be the hero? Because I don't really want to see Media Man again in that. Like. I don't necessarily uh, want it to be a hero movie. Nigga, I just want it to be like a gangster movie with the oh, Golden right. Lords. So yeah. They can go out dying, but it, hey, it's it's like them niggas the reason the why first. the Golden Lords are like it could be like a prequel before Meteor Man. The reason why the Golden Lords appeared and shit. Huh. Like you know what I'm saying? Okay. 
how the Golden Lords became Hollywood, what they were. Come to me for all your ideas. They started. They started. <laughs> They started like the uh, gangs in LA, you know, it was community patrolling and then that shit got out of hand. And then they started mm-hmm. recruiting the youngins and then the youngins learned karate they start, and they started dying they their start hair with dying peroxide. Hair and next thing you know, the yeah. city had a peroxide shortage. And then, so, I don't know where to go from there, but I got you there. Just on another, I know what it is. <laughs> Just on another tangent. I'm part of this Facebook group for with um, the Last Dragon and probably everybody who loves the movie The Last Dragon. And and everybody's been talking about a reboot. I hope they do not do a reboot of that movie. I mean, even though they have, we have characters who fulfill the parts, I, I I leave the classics alone, man. Leave the classics the fuck alone. Yeah, I'm good on that. Leave they the classics it. alone. Gordy and them did it all right the first time. I'm cool with it. Like um, they were talking about people who played the part. They were like Lauren London for the um the main actress role. Uh, well, who I forgot who was Vanity, who played. I'm not mad at that. Vanity, or, yeah. At least they picked that would the be cast, but still, I'm I'm good. Yeah, yeah, I'm good. I don't I don't I'm want y'all to redo my my favorite movie. As far as the look. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I got some classic people, but y'all ain't gonna redo no classic movies and do it right. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. Nah, no, I don't know about that. Too much with you, it. Somebody yeah. gonna try to take too much creative license with it. Like sometimes when you reboot a movie, especially when it's this far away from the original time frame that it came out in, you miss some of why the movie was actually a classic. Like you focus on the the cast and the script and shit, as opposed to it might have been just because of where society was at the time, or it could have been because mm-hmm. um, it focused on a specific aspect of, of culture that was relevant at that moment, but now may not be so much able to resonate with people. You know what I mean? Like, sometimes you just, like, just leave the shit alone. Yeah. Just bring out just more, just give us new ideas, you know, new things to look at. Pretty and much. the moral of the so, story is, leave our childhood alone. Yeah, but getting into that idea, new things to look at, new ideas and new movies and shit. Netflix dropped this like teaser vid of all like 80 of the movies that's coming out this year. And uh, a lot of us in there, a lot of black folks in there. Uh, Halle Berry got a movie called Mother. One movie that oh, really mother? caught my eye. Yeah. Actually, Mothership. It's called Mothership. Mothership. Mother is a horror movie. This. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, I mm-hmm. a movie called Mother. All right. Mother is a horror movie. <laughs> and Auntie. No, nah, I'm sorry. I'm joking. <laughs> but one of the movies that caught my eye because y'all know I'm big on sci-fi shit or whatever. You are they, the uh, one. Yes. But uh, this movie got Jamie Foxx uh, and um, what's his name? Joe, John Boyega from uh, the Star Wars yeah, movie. Yep, 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 yep. Ben. Yep. Yep, Ben. Ben. It's going to be him and uh, Jamie Foxx in a movie called They Clone Tyrone. What? <laughs> Which is crazy. What? Hold on. They Clone Tyrone. <laughs> they Clone Tyrone. Okay. But like, when I look Why at Why it got to be Tyrone, like, though, y'all? <laughs> like, what the hell, yo? I'm done, man. All right. <laughs> it's, it's, a, it's like a sci-fi comedy, right? Okay. But when I look at, like, the... When I look at like um, like the the poster that they have for it or whatever, they got um, Jamie Foxx character in the middle or whatever, and he got this pimped out suit, purple outfit on with like the uh, the step uh, high top fade and everything, and um, John Boyega's to the side looking like a intergalactic Wu Tang member with this coat he got on and everything. But the whole gist of the movie is they're like uncovering this government conspiracy where they're cloning people. I'll watch it because it's Jamie Foxx. 
He gonna say something hilarious at some point. So I watch. It the, from the looks of it, it looks it got this like fifth element look to it. The way the colors, you know, the outfits. Yeah, that's this year. And they say it's gonna drop in like June or whatever. Jamie Foxx got another movie in this teaser or whatever. It's called Day Shift. And at first it just looked like a regular action movie, but I think he, he got a scene in there where like some type of vampire came out or something. So I'm wondering if that's like some type of vampire Horror movie. Action. But yeah. yeah. It's it's a lot of work. They, hmm? Okay. Yeah, he's getting that work. work. He's getting that work. And yeah, they got a whole bunch of other movies. Queen Latifah got a movie called End of the Road uh, with Ludacris. That that's surprising. Um, was it Long one as you're getting naked again, like in Bessie? Nah, well, I, that's probably I why I didn't see, see that movie. That. That's oh, probably okay. why I didn't see that movie. Oh, that. oh, oh Day Shift like old, is bro. starring. A Shift is starring Jamie Foxx, Megan Good, Snoop Dogg, and someone named Carla Souza. Carlo de Souza? Carla, Carla Souza. Oh, okay. I don't mm-hmm. know who that is, but I, I know the rest of the world. I'll roll with it. Carla Souza. So, yeah, it's like it's the, the teaser's out or whatever. If y'all want to take a look at it, but man, they, they got they put out a lot of movies and it was pretty good so far. They all they don't look like low budget movies at all. It's look like straight out of a Hollywood studio, or whatever, pretty much. Or there we go. Tyler Perry Studios. And I think it's a Medea movie coming out, but I don't really care too much about Medea. Yeah, it is. Yeah. I read about that. Come Medea on, Medea. Homecoming. She's still rocking, huh? Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. it's a thief for life. Mm-hmm. Ain't never mm-hmm. going out. <laughs> you gonna, you gonna get her movies for the rest of your life, damn it. Forever. Forever, ever. Medea forever. Ever. That's, gonna ever. Ever. That's gonna be the next one. <laughs> Medea forever. <laughs> It's gonna be like the Batman movie. <laughs> it's gonna be Batman Forever with, with Medea. Hey there, bitches! <laughs> I'm biting that shit. I'm Medea. Hell no. Hell no. That shit got to stop. <laughs> she starts slinging the Bible like a like a batarang and stuff. <laughs> Down. Yeah, I remember that Boondocks episode. Niggas out with her stockings. Yeah, I remember that Boondocks episode. Yeah. Yup. <laughs> yep. Stupid. <Stick me. laughs> oh, that one. That one Boondocks episode. I know it going on a tangent, but that one Boondocks episode when they had um they had Red Fox character up there. Like the friends oh, yeah, yeah. Esther and them, yeah, and, and JJ. And Esther mm-hmm. and um and JJ up there, man. They did were doing karate. Oh, put Shudo Brown up. Rest in peace, put Shudo Brown, man. I actually mm-hmm. like him as a character. Yeah. Oh, Shudo. Stink me had a mean Shido. ass crew, boy. They were serious about their shit. Man, oh, yeah. you come straight you know out of a comic book. The super haters. <laughs> they ride with their ass well. But uh, speaking of ass whoopings and fights and shit, uh, let's get right into the fuckery. Um, the, man, I saw this news report and I said, yep, this is perfect for the fuckery, man. Police are in- investigating a 40 person fight at a Golden Corral that some say started over a dis- disagreement about steak. Mm. Ain't that a buffet? Golden yeah. Corral. Yes. How you fight they over food down. at a buffet? Like, eat something else till they come back out with the steak. They got other shit. Yeah, got a lot of other you shit. You know, you brought up, you brought up a word earlier um, when you were talking about the peroxide so, uh, shortage. Shortage. They had a mm. steak shortage. Okay. So they ran out of steaks completely, or they just didn't have a mm-hmm. steak out there. Mm. Yep. So they, what you gonna fight over? At, so if they out of stakes, what you gonna fight over? Like you can make them have stakes. The last steak. Like what y'all fight the last over? Steak. This is it. Um, this 
Ben Man, Salem. Is it B E N S A Ben Salem? Is it Ben Salem? B E N S A L E M. Ben Salem. Sounds like you know Ben I'm Salem. To. Ben Salem. Ben Salem. Ben Salem. Yeah. Ben Salem. Mm-hmm. Don't wanna be saved. Ben save them. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Mm-hmm. And it didn't save those people fighting <laughs> in Peninsula. Yeah, in Peninsula, Pennsylvania. <laughs> yeah. I, 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 I shouldn't awful. say words while I'm laughing. You shame your damn self. Fighting with a <laughs> damn buffet steak. Get the fuck Yo. out of here. You know the things they were saying in this in this article about what they were. Give me that steak. <laughs> give me your motherfucker. Give me your motherfucking steak. They said he heard there was a shortage of steak, and two parties were involved. One family cut in front of the another family. They were talking. Mm. They were taking their time, and they ran out of steak, and they got into a heated exchange at the table. Mm. Oh man, people, we got eyewitness. That's ridiculous. I, 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 better. Do no. fucking much better. Out of pocket. You are out of Witness. pocket. Alexis Rios told local Philadelphia news station Six ABC on Tuesday that the brawl began when a when a <laughs> dinner in front of him and in line became angry with the cook because they had ordered a well done steak before Rios, but Rios received his rare steak first. I had a rare <laughs> steak. Which is a lot faster to cook than them well done steaks. Logical. <laughs> he told the news station, that's why I got my steak first. I grab a chair to defend myself, Rios told the same outlet, adding, punches was getting thrown, chairs were getting thrown. <laughs> oh, Somebody scream, world star. Not even a shortage. This nigga was just mad because the cook did what he was supposed to do. Mm. Entitled ass motherfuckers out right here. I will mind first. I place my order first. I don't care how long it takes to cook that bitch. Fuck if his take it takes it faster. I he should deal with it. It was black people that started this fight. Um, <laughs> um no, I don't think this is black people. The last mm-hmm. name was Rios, mm-hmm. and uh, yeah, I don't, they ain't saying anything about black people. You know, if it was black people involved, it would be all in the dang story. So. You know, the black <laughs> resident. <laughs> it sounded like some niggas. Yeah. Hey, but once again, this shit is not niggas coming in every color. Nigga moments mm-hmm. Niggas come in every color. Mm-hmm. Niggas come in every color and culture. I had to ask. Oh, man. Well done, Daddy. steak. Sounds like us. I like yeah. well done steak, so I can't even lie. But, you know, yeah, might have been me. I don't like nah, me. I wasn't in Ben no Salem. Food. They don't want to be saved. Ben Salem. They don't want to be saved. I'm sorry. He's a rare state. He added that he believes the situation that led to the ball was exacerbate. Exacerbate. Ah, flick it, flick it. Oh, another word to mess up. Exacerbated. It's exasperated. Exasperated. Yeah. Exasperated. 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 Or exasperated. Which one? E X A C E R B A T E. Okay, exacerbated. Exacerbated. <laughs> exacerbated. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. By people <laughs> being unable to fully <laughs> understand each other through the face mask due to COVID-19 restrictions that just get worse and worse. Jesus. He said <laughs> they couldn't understand each other because of the mask, because <laughs> of the COVID-19 restrictions. Y'all take the mask out mm-hmm. when y'all eat. <laughs> Yo, what the fuck? Yo. Don't save them. Ben Salem don't want to be saved. What <laughs> the fuck going on out there, yo? People, y'all like, must be some good steak. What the hell? Oh, um, fuck going on out there, man. That shit could be some shit that ain't gonna fuck up your heart and shit anyway, man. Fuck that up. shit don't make no damn sense. Stop eating them cows, people. Mm. Stop drinking their milk, stop eating their cheese. Leave them cows alone. That's my opinion. Jesus Christ. Makes it aggressive when you eat. Um, speaking of aggression. <clears throat> Pretty much last story on the fuckery. 
Oh boy. So um in the past month, uh it looks like North Korea was having problems with their internet, like completely internet. going down. Hmm? They have internet? Yeah. Everywhere got internet. <laughs> Kinda. Oh <laughs> they had like you know some old face. it's probably heavily run by the government, <laughs> but like video on mm-hmm. the government told them was internet. And it's like all Kim Jong un Kim Jong il propaganda. Yeah, that's probably what it's like, pretty much. www.kimjong.com. That's all you can go to. But that's it. That's it. You know, see his fat ass somewhere getting mad and eating steaks. End up at that website every time, all the time. <laughs> that's all you get. But um, so it turns out that the reason why they had this blackout of the internet in, in North Korea was not by a government-run attack at all. Were which they, they just poor? Ex- hmm? Were they just poor as a country and couldn't afford it anymore? <laughs> they, bought, they, they, they got the internet from North Japan. Korea, we talking about. The- Nothing I'm saying is out of the realm of possibility with them. It's... Mm-mm. Land of uh, know right. So they said their uh, number one suspect was the U.S. the U.S. Cyber Command, but it turns out it wasn't them. You know who it was? It was one single hacker, okay. one random American hacker. In an interview with Wired Magazine, an American hacker identified only as P4X claims to be the person behind the blackouts. Wired has seen the evidence to back up his claims. Uh, I want them to understand that if you come at us, it means some of your infrastructure is going down for a while. Now, (laughs) normally I would think this is probably some copycat dude or some dude that just claimed something and this, that, and the third. But uh, it's North Korea. And uh North Korea. I kind of believe somebody. And um, you know, I'm I my job is techie and I listen to these people or, or whatever when they call in and all the stuff they like get into or whatever. And um uh, I can kind of believe one of these random hackers in America got pissed off at Korea one day because he saw something from Q9 or some shit like that or whatever, and or mm-hmm. they, Got they got the wrong robo call one day and on the wrong day and got pissed off and tracked the IP address down and found out it was North Korea and said, you know what? <clears throat> and then just all of a sudden, I don't believe it. I, don't believe, I believe it was some 17 year old little prodigy that got bored and was like, let me fuck with a country who got the weakest. You know, you know. Let me go to North Korea with it. Because they're being younger than that shit. Because that's some eight-year-old bullshit. That's, a, that's what happened to uh, Canada in that episode of South Park when they were trolling. <laughs> Pretty much. Mm-hmm. Hey, man. Yeah. Anybody could be a hacker, so it, it don't take a lot. Nah, it's dude. all right, North Korea. I, I know how it is to have whack in I ain't about to be feeling sorry for you. I feel sorry for the people. But yeah, definitely the people. Government, nobody in the government. Fuck y'all. I don't give a damn about y'all. Fuck y'all. But I, I really believe I the police. People the, take the, from their families in, in, in the middle of the night and weird shit, man. Fuck y'all. Y'all are the same. But the people that should at least have the internet. So. The people. Who on, on Kim Jong? Shit. Putin. I don't feel no sense. Fuck Putin. <laughs> the Nazca. <laughs> <laughs> but yep. Fuck my Nanaska. Putin. But yep. That is the good and the fuckery for today. Episode sixty four. Uh well, if we're going outside with the good and fuckery, I guess it's time to go against the grain, man. So I'll start it off, man. My number one against the grain this week. Uh Contrary to popular belief, man, I think Mad TV it was funnier than SNL. SNL back in the day, man. During its run, I can see that. <laughs> like, I, 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 they came with some heat, man. It was, it was original. 
Um, at a certain point, I feel as a man, we, we do the same concepts with just different people, man. So uh, I dig Man TV way better than SNL. You might be right. Um, Listen, man. Man. He, he looking like a man. Still one of oh, that shit's still hilarious. That's still hilarious. <laughs> and, and, and SNL had a slump period where it was just corny. Yeah, it was just it was real right corny. Yeah, like yeah. it was good in the eighties. First two or three seasons of Mad TV, they were fucking. Mm-hmm. And then it it kind of like gave you a little bit like people were um they had a void because uh, Living Color was off the air. Yep, pretty much because they came right after Living Color, and it it kind of was mm-hmm. like the in between the Living Color and SNL, somewhat. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, yeah. Damn right. Now moving on to my second against the grain this week. Um, I think we should normalize telling people how 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 their babies really look, man. I don't think it's wrong to tell somebody if their baby not cute. Oh shit! <laughs> yeah, I, I feel like if the baby is ugly, the parents knew way before anybody else told you. You sure so you it? shouldn't feel no type of way for somebody telling you the truth about your kid. If my children was ugly, when I saw them, I'd have knew it. And if anybody told me, oh, damn, that, that, that's a strong little baby. I know it. I said the same thing when he was born. Oh, but he oh gonna be please something. keep the pacifier in the mouth. So, I, mean, I think we should normalize telling people how they babies really look when we see them for the first time. Don't be stunned. Don't be forced to lie. Don't be trying to be creative with your words. Tell the truth. Let the truth set you free. Got one patch of hair. Yeah, I ain't gonna mess with the baby, but I will. I do think we should normalize. Hey, normalize being honest, people. Let's get it. <laughs> oh, this my guess, the brain. What about y'all, fuck you, man? Oh man, the baby did that has to be hit. Um, well, my first one this week is I just hate barbecue and hot sauce. I know a lot of black. <laughs> Probably would uh, be pissed at me about that, but I hate that shit. I don't see the purpose of it. It doesn't fit to me. And I don't mean like, oh, well, this hot sauce you're going to love, or this barbecue is amazing. No, I mean just all of it. it. It can really go. Like, if you want to put some on some shit, get some mambo sauce. You got yum yum sauce. You got all these other fucking great ass. You got ranch. You got ketchup. You got whatever else. But fuck barbecue and hot sauce. <laughs> I've never tasted mambo sauce, unfortunately, and I'm from the DMV. So, I mean, what does it taste like? It depends on which one you get. If you get the straight sweet one, then it's like a. Damn it! I don't even know how to describe it, yo. It's it's like mambo. No, it's not. Yeah, I don't, it's, it's like it tastes like DC. <laughs> okay. That's about okay. All I guess. I I it's like it's no other sauce. Like, like the closest thing I can <clears throat> is maybe Polynesian sauce is like in that same realm, I guess. Okay, bet then. But it's not it's it don't taste the same as Polynesian sauce though. So I don't I don't know what to put it in, but it's it's mambo sauce. Every, it's also got the, it, the, every the, time. Sweet and, the sweet and hot one that's a spicier one. So then mm. like, it's a different kick to it too. So it just depends on which one you get. But mambo sauce, especially straight from the DMV, but if you can't get it straight from like straight from a DC chatty spot, capital city, uh mambo sauce, you can get it in Walmart. It's fucking amazing. Mm-hmm. It's fucking amazing. I've seen that you just taste it, time. When you taste the go go music, start playing in your head. Bro, start all of a sudden beating your feet. Your taste buds, <laughs> okay. right then, like that shit. Like, I put my whole. Like, everybody was like, "Yo, uh, I asked for that shit for my birthday, and my cousin gave me that shit for my birthday." And I put the whole. Give me your number. The wife, the son, like, and now literally, keep a bottle of mambo sauce in the fridge at all times. Like, it has to be replenished. If it's halfway done, let's get the other one in because that means the next time we have dinner, that shit is gone. Like. Cook mumble sauce on Saturday. <laughs> Fuck barbecue. <laughs> right. Um, and then my my other one is I don't believe that like that that not liking things mean that you hate. 
I believe that maybe you just really don't like that shit. <laughs> I agree. Like, I, I feel like we've taken this hating thing too far to the point of like everything that somebody don't like, they hating on it. No, maybe it's just not your cup of tea. Like, people ain't got to like every damn thing just because you did it. I hope you're successful at it, but I don't like that shit. That shit whack. Good luck to you. I hope somebody else like it so that you can, you know, generate your revenue, but you won't get a dollar from me for it because the shit whack. And that ain't being a <laughs> hater. That's being realistic and, ha- and having a mind. So, uh, yeah. Those are my against, 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 against the gray. I feel, I feel you on that shit. People, I feel you on that shit. Sometimes you just don't like stuff. Sometimes you, you just don't like stuff. At, at all, man. I don't like a lot of shit. So, you know, I you know I don't like I don't like when people like stuff too much. That and it and, and then it gets to the point where it gets to tizzes against the grain, where it's like because they like stuff too much or whatever, you're hating. Whatever. That's I don't, I don't like that. Like what you like, but don't <clears throat> other people for not like just because you think it's. Mm-hmm. Cool. That it is for everybody it just means that you think it's cool. So as long as you think it's cool, it doesn't bother you that much if somebody else don't like it. It's more for you, whatever that is. Mm-hmm. But um my first against the grain is this. Um if you have utter ever uttered the words as an alpha male, it might be a chance you're not an alpha. Because the whole <laughs> definition that hmm. His matrix. I don't disagree. I, I like, I, it's like the whole, it's one of those things where, like, you can't say you the greatest of all time. Somebody else got to acknowledge that. You know, and, well, I mean, you can, but you know, like, you got to be at a certain point that people will just like, if you do say it, you're like, mm, you, 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 nigga, you got a point. What or whatever. Is, is that old <laughs> adage that men have, real men have? What's understood don't gotta be said. Like, exactly. When an alpha runs across another alpha, it ain't like you gotta announce yourself as one. It's just I recognize it because I I, I sense the same presence as I have. Real recognize. It real. Looks familiar. Yeah. yeah. It ain't that 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 deep as people be trying to make it these days, man. Like if you're a real man, another real man is gonna respect it because they the vibe is there. It's not like you gotta come in with a sign on your chest. And a T-shirt that said, "I'm an alpha." Mm. <laughs> That's corny as fuck. That's like saying, yeah. "Like I, I'm a person." Like nigga, I can see you. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Shit, <laughs> what the fuck? I breathe today too. <laughs> Look at me breathe. <clears throat> so yeah, yeah. Um, and plus, you you you're setting yourself up for the okie doke in the long run, especially if you say that around people. Yeah. Uh, you just set yourself up. Um, <clears throat> on another note, my other uh, against the grain is that um, I don't think women are the emotional monolith that the media tends to portray they are a lot. I do feel like they are more in tune with their emotions to the point more than men. To the point that if there's a if they have something that bothers them, they know exactly what triggered that, and they can tell you exactly more. Then, um, and I, uh, <clears throat> mm. I can I I'll agree that they can tell you how they feel about something, but they don't usually know why. Because you know why? They don't remember facts. They remember the feeling. Mm-hmm. Which is why men tend to get in trouble so much because we start talking about well, I didn't do that. But they don't remember exactly what you did. They just <laughs> felt about what you did. It's that old thing. Mm. You know how they said, like, people will forget how what, uh, what you did, but they won't forget how you made them feel or whatever. You know, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. With women, that shit is just heightened because, like, their emotional, their emotional process, <laughs> like, even when they talk, the reason they talk more, like, they'll tell the same story, but they'll add way more in it because as they're going through the story, they're remembering how they feel. And as they say certain words, it triggers a certain emotion that takes them to another thought 
about how they felt about that. And, and that's why you get these more long story. Like, it's literally <laughs> how they socialize the process. They come, you know what I mean? But yeah, I, I definitely, uh, yeah. They not emotional. That's, that's why I say. I definitely roll with you there. Yeah, that's why I would say the, that emotional monolith part is that's where they might get things twisted, where it gets to, like, they have a point that is a trigger and it triggers some other triggers. Or whatever, and it goes into that a little bit more. But they are good yeah, I can see how you describe. Because men are, we struggle sometimes. Yes, on like, <clears throat> like we know we feel something, but we don't know exactly how. That's to, that's what I was throwing at. Yeah, like process it and would it would exactly to call it to even deal with it. Whereas women can kind of be like, okay, I was frustrated. No, I wasn't angry. I was frustrated, and it was you know what I mean like they can make those like nuanced understanding the, the, like exactly what the emotion is but what exactly the event was that triggered it oh i don't know that they more in tune there i'm, I'm i might have to uh just play devil yeah, well that one what you just said i i think you just explained what i was thinking a bit more oh, accurately or whatever yeah they yeah they do. Emotionally as, soon as, far as like what they feel like we struggle with that a lot as men like we like, all right. I know I feel something's weird, but I don't know yeah, what this feeling is. I don't know if I'm mm -hmm. sad. I don't know if I'm just sad. I don't know if I just really just don't feel like doing this. I don't know what I'm tired. Like it's kind of just. I know it's mm -hmm. something ain't right. Yeah, yeah, I did. Yeah, I did. Like some ain't right. <laughs> is it some ain't right? My brain on that I'm one. Chilling. <clears throat> that's like the male. That's like the male emotional. Um. Spectrum. Something ain't right. I'm chilling. <laughs> That's it. That's it. <laughs> Something ain't right. I don't know about this. And this, I'm good. There you go. <laughs> no lies detected. No lies detected. Yep. Uh, yeah, that's my, my against the grains. Well, since we going against the grain, uh, I'll go ahead and uh, take over here. I don't know if this is a rant, but it's definitely a... Uh, I have two tears takes this week. Um, dum, dum, dum. So Joe Rogan has been in the media this past uh, couple of weeks. Uh, he's been apologizing a lot. And uh, the most recent one is for like his uh, use of the, the N-words and stuff like this. And they put together like this compilation that popped out on YouTube. That's like all of the time he said the N-word in the course of his podcast or whatever. Now, this Joe Rogan outrage then then pushed me past my fucking limit. Um, people spazzing off of clips from the past twelve years or so without any context is just stupid to me. First off, like I could see if they play if they play like the episodes in the full context of that whole conversation, but just playing just the one sentence where he's saying an end, like nigga, like that don't really. Yeah. Show exactly why he said it. And I ain't one of them people that feel like, well, if we go if we can't like at the end of the day, man, until I'ma get to that. Let me not even go there. Mm -hmm. But first of all, stop spazzing off of old shit without contact. Second of all, people are canceling this man, but they were never listening or following this man in the first place. Like they won't even watching this nigga shit. How you gonna cancel him and you ain't like him in the first place? Like I you wouldn't have known about him if the news won't talk about him saying this N-word shit. Like, you would have exactly. never even cared. It, it don't go across your radar. So why are you talking about you? Like, all these fake ass. Oh, so, all right, nigga, you didn't give a fuck last week, so stop. Just don't give a fuck this week. Like, fuck out of here with this fake outrage shit, man. This new... This new witch hunt. Let me find all the fucked up shit you did that you done grown from in your past that you might not have done in five to 10 years, but because you did it way back then, let me use that against you now. Like, that shit corny, man. And it, it, it don't let people grow. Like, we gotta give people room to grow. Like, there's nobody I know that's above the age of 30 that's like doing this or thinking the same way that they was in their 20s. Like, it, you grow. Like, the shit you thought was funny back then may not be as funny now because you done had different life changes that may change it. You may have had a kid. You may have a wife now. You may have gone through some trauma or some new life experience. You may have bought a house. Like, shit is going to shift in your mind. So, like, 
to think that we didn't all, and I mean all young people, say some fucked up shit, whether it was just to our friend groups or whether it was on a public platform. We didn't all say it and done some fucked up shit when we was young, just off the fact that we was young and didn't know no better. And then as you grew and learned and realized the impact you had in the world, you begin to do better. Like, we can't keep doing that shit, man. Like, if you don't pay attention, tears take one. If you don't pay attention to, to someone or to something, or if you yourself do the same shit you upset at, stop saying you canceling them or acting outraged. You didn't care yesterday, so keep that same fucking energy. And that leads me to my second tier take on the same topic. Why? And it was part of that last tier take. Why do we keep being outraged at the same behaviors that we display toward other races? See, a lot of black people that will call a white person a cracker or Asian a chink in traffic or will call uh, 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 a person of Arab descent, they'll call them a, a sad nigga or Arab or whatever else other than their actual ethnicity. But then when somebody else do it, we keep being outraged. Matter of fact, fuck the fact that we mad at them about saying shit that we say about other races. We say that shit about each other. We call each other nigga. And I ain't about to get caught up in the semantics. Mm -hmm. of, we use it as a Greek. Man, look. Words got meanings, folks. If we gonna keep using it as a whatever, we can't keep being outraged. We also rob, steal, beat, and kill our own people daily. We act a hot ass mess in public as a race. We coddle our own people when they do stupid shit and then say, well, you know, we don't, don't talk about another black man or black woman. <laughs> but then we want all this respect from the outside world. Until we respect ourselves, we are gonna keep on receiving disrespect. So I'm done with getting upset. Tears take number two. I'm done with getting upset at other races for saying nigga or any other slur until we stop calling each other, treating each other, and acting like nigga. And I'm done. And the floor is y'all. I am complete. Um, I was going to say, the people that, listen, that look at Joe Rogan is not the people who is going to cast him. And that's the reason why he's not going to get canceled. He's just not. Mm. He's just not. Yeah. The, the people right that uh, that's actually, yeah, the people that's actually offended or whatever, you won't listen to them anyway or whatever. You just hear know. these tad bits. And then when the person, the person you get like, uh, get a certain amount of fame or whatever, and if somebody gets into a disagreement, because this didn't even start on the racism shit. It, it started off with Neil Young or whatever being a vaccine advocate saying that I'm not going to have my music on the same platform as racing when the RE got into it and started putting stuff out or whatever. Me, I've been knowing about Joe Rogan there's a lot of things I disagree with with Joe Rogan. There's some things I do agree with with Joe Rogan when he has these conversations. And his whole thing about his show is getting people that he ne don't necessarily agree with or disagree with on the show to see why we disagree or mm -hmm. have a conversation. Mm -hmm. So that's the whole gist of his show. So in a, in a platform like that, it's bound to be some Quentin Tarantino-esque words thrown about right yeah, yeah I, I, i'm i'm <clears throat> i'm not i'm not i'm never going to be surprised for a white man being a white man i'm never <laughs> going to be surprised at a human at a, a human <laughs> being a human and doing human shit i'm just never going to be surprised at that or whatever oh a oh, oh, white man said nigga oh hey guess where i'm from virginia <laughs> guess where yeah. I live probably down down the street from somebody that got a confederate flag that's calling niggas niggas as they walk past his house not out loud probably but probably seen it in his house that happens 
I'm not gonna be surprised about that. What I'm more, I don't, I don't want a whole campaign so we can get one person to stop saying nigga. Right. Y'all gonna make get a whole movement and millions of people on Twitter or whatever platform to say to get this one person to stop saying nigga. No, no, no. I don't even care if y'all say nigga. I don't want y'all to stop treating us as niggas. A human being. There you go. <laughs> Whatever. So uh, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna go on a rage campaign because he said he said nigga I just I'll go let's go on a rage campaign against these like big ass politicians and get Democrats that pander to us on Fuck Black that. History Month with dashiki cloths <laughs> with, with kente cloths and shit okay. so we can get votes so they can do absolutely nothing uh-huh All right. i mean nothing. matter of fact matter of fact is is the people that's canceling joe rogan right now that's pissing me off because they're not doing nothing this is like right. the same thing as danger right. pal say it. right Oh, I think I'm outraged to look cool for clicks and views, but you're not actually outraged. Like, <clears throat> just following a trend of other people. Like, it may have been somebody who was actually outraged by it. Cool. Mm-hmm. Most of if y'all. If India are Ari's outraged, most I'm, of y'all I'm don't cool care about it. Joe Rogan. You didn't care about him last week. You're not going to care about him next week. Like, nothing in your, you've done nothing different in your life other than send a tweet, an Instagram post, or make a TikTok. So let that shit go. I still don't understand. I still don't understand how Joe Rogan is as big as he is. Like, one, he he's a comedian, but to me, he's not that funny as a comedian. He's really dry. He is huh? a comedian, so he has that lane. Mm-hmm. Also, really lane. Into the fight game, so he has a lane right. that. Then he's also into conspiracy theories. So he has that lane. Like he's in because his show is built off of having conversations with random people and just kind of allowing them to express their views and he challenge them and they go back and forth. But it's really just about like learning and trying to grow. Mm-hmm. He says he has so many conversations with so many different topics. Years. The reason he has yeah. millions of viewers is because really hundreds of millions of people have at some point tuned in because he was talking to somebody that resonated with them. So when he bring on the doctors, he gonna get a bunch of medical people coming over to watch. Mm. When he get when he does uh politics, he gonna get a bunch of people that's into politics to come over. You know what I mean? Like he he just has such a vast you get alien. Yeah, you got you got them enthusiasts over there. Exactly. He just got so many places he can go, whereas a lot of mm-hmm. other people are kind of like stuck into one perspective he don't have it's, it's One literally aspect. anything goes so anybody that watches even if you don't necessarily care about the person that's on there they'll get to like he'll have somebody on there that's from the medical place but they'll get to talking about the intricacies of like how they like steak cook and it's such a regular conversation that at some point during that conversation some gonna resonate with you because it's just it, it, they, a regular they conversation, yeah. conversation. yes at some point, they're going to cover something that resonates with you, whether it's re- relationships or politics or, like Faye said, the alien shit. Like, all of that shit gets covered with almost every guest. So it's like so many different angles. I'll put it like this, man. Niggas have, excuse me, people have nothing better to do than look for shit to cancel. But if y'all cancel mm-hmm. everything y'all trying to cancel, y'all have nothing else to entertain you. It's the shit that entertains you that you want to cancel just to have something to say. It's cool to have your opinion, but everyone has one, and yours is no no more painted or no more important than the next person. You can't cancel somebody just because your opinion is offended. Oh, well, I am I guarantee you these people who are so easily offended by everything that want to be canceled, they really don't have too many real-life conversations. Because they did, they'll be offended a lot more. Mm-hmm. It's a lot of trying to drive content. Like, 
this dude is getting so big. Let me poke the bear or try to cancel this person so I can just get the content of seeing how they respond. So now I have more shit to watch and fuel my like that troll mm-hmm. ultra center of my brain. It's like I need drama. Where's the controversy? Oh, ain't no controversy. Let me go back and find something. Then. Let me sit. Like I really let me make some that now that they are just sit there and like okay, hmm. I like watching this person. Let me find out how much fucked up shit they done did in the past. So I can bring that up. Mm-hmm. The fake outrage. Now mm-hmm. we have a whole new cycle of shit for me to watch. Mm. Like, because mm-hmm. there's, there's no other reason for you to go back in somebody's deep past to find the fucked up shit. Like, if they're doing some fucked up now, hold them to it. But everybody done done some fucked up. No matter what, how, how little you consider it to be fucked up or how great. Everybody done lied, cheated, stole, then fucked around on their maid. Or then cursed out somebody that they shouldn't have, or to call somebody something that they shouldn't have, and it's just a matter of whether or not it was a camera pointed at you when you did it. But you've done it, so mm-hmm. if you're not doing it now. Does that make you a bad person now? Like because you call somebody some fucked up shit in fifth grade, does that make you a horrible <clears throat> adult? Like I don't think so. I think that like everybody doesn't grow. But everybody can grow, and we gotta allow people that space. Like, come on, man! Celebrate the growth, man! Celebrate the growth, not the negativity of the past. Absolutely. Be a person for what they're trying to become, not not for what they were. Trying to tell you, and um, yeah, man, that's been my tears takes for the night, man. Yeah. I appreciate y'all letting me go off on that for a minute, and also just sharing y'all uh, y'all perspectives on it, man. And uh, I like the way Faye said, you know, focus on the growth. Because uh, if you've noticed, the partners are continuing to grow. We're continuing to continue to uh, get better and work on the video production and all of that for y'all. So uh, mm-hmm. support your boys, man. And Faye's telling one of the best ways that they can support us. You know, man, you can go to good old Art Trade Clothing.com and get your first ACA3 merchandise. And also your partner's podcast merchandise, man. Always mm-hmm. refreshed up for every season of the year. Winter, spring, summer, and fall. Got your hoodies, got your short sleeve long so you got your beach towels, got your polos. We got a lot of different stuff there. Um, you will see a increased social media presence from us sooner than later. But if you want to see the clothes, you want to purchase the clothes, you want to celebrate with us, you want to support us, you want to support the different brands that we do create, once again, go to rtreclothing.com. That's A-R-T-R-E clothing.com. Check us out, man. Big facts. Big facts. And continue to support in all of the other ways as well. Um, You can continue to financially support through the Cash App. That's dollar sign Podna Tears 1. That's P-O-D-N-A-T-I-Z-1. Or you can also support on buymeacoffee.com and you can donate for as little as $1 or become a monthly member for $4.99, which gives you access to a bunch of exclusive perks. You can also support financially by going to anchor.fm backslash the hyphen partners. And you can go ahead and support our podcast by becoming a monthly supporter for $4.99. And just, you know, continuing to help us to grow all of the proceeds that you get put into us. We literally put right back into the podcast, whether it be pay, paying hosting fees, paying uh, for store stuff, paying for the actual uh, new equipment and new ways that we're trying to improve the sound and visual qualities. Like everything you donate and, and support with does go back into the company. So please continue to support. And if you cannot support financially, you can always support by easily. If you're on YouTube, like, share, subscribe, real easy. Like, share with people that you think may, it may resonate with as well. And then make sure that you are subscribed and they're subscribed as well so y'all can stay tuned in to all of the latest pod squad news and events. Also, go ahead, make sure that you are checked in. Log in to thepartners.com. About to update it this week, so you'll see a bunch of new graphics, a bunch of new content on there. You'll see all of the updated links. You'll see new store picks so that y'all can see the updated AC83 and Partners gear. You'll see it all, so be looking out for that. And Pat, if they want to get in touch with us, like they want to talk to us, they want to interact with us, they want to kind of pick our brain, they want to share their thoughts and opinions, 
or they want to hear ours and just kind of keep up with us on a day-to-day basis? How can they do that? At T-H-E-P-O-D-N-A-S. And that is our Twitter. That is our Instagram. That is our TikTok. Uh, I believe it's also our Twitch. And Tiz Face Pack, all the partners on Facebook. Indeed. And uh, yep, just hit us up there with any ideas. If you got any topics y'all want us to discuss, any uh, videos you want us to react to, just go ahead there. Um, and there's always the email of T H E P O D N A S podcast P O D C A S T at gmail.com. Yep. Indeed, indeed. And uh, speaking of users, um, <laughs> Speaking of viewers and pod squad members reaching out and giving us show ideas, uh, I definitely got you last call. One of the OG members of the pod squad, one of the the members of the board of the pod squad, um, I got you. Um, I'm definitely going to have a topic next week on the Black Seminoles of Florida um, to kind of touch on some Black history stuff there. So I got you, King. But yeah, man. Interesting. Uh, yeah, man. Uh, he definitely put me up on that. I hadn't really even... Like, I don't think I'd ever even really heard of that. So uh, it's going to be dope to kind of do the research over the next week and uh, unveil that and discuss that. I've, I've heard, I said that story. Oh, dope. So you'll know some. You you may be able to uh, add into some of what I research and kind of give me even more perspective. Dope combo. On yeah, that. I'm familiar with it. Yeah. Yeah, man. But um, that is episode 64 of my so people. That- we about to get up out this thing. It's been a wonderful one. This has been a, a really dope show. Like, I really enjoyed the conversations we had tonight, man. So I hope y'all did too. Oh, and if you want to join in on our conversation, <coughs> take two. And if you want to join in on our conversations, please make sure you listen to the podcast on anchor.fm backslash the hyphen partners or listen on Spotify. By doing so, you'll get a link and you can click on that button and you can actually leave us a voice message that can be played during our episode. So that thought that you had, that you was like, damn, I wish people heard me say that. I wanted to be in on the podcast in that moment. You can actually have your voice heard on the podcast as part of the actual podcast audio. So when we say you can join the conversation, you can literally join the conversation. So that's anchor.fm backslash the hyphen the partners. Or you can go to Spotify and listen to us there. And on either of those platforms, you can actually join the conversation. So please do so. Um, and as always, I have been your boy, Tiz. And I've been along with... Super Dramatic Paul. Well, the other third of the partners, the... <laughs> the other third of the partners I know I'm going in now this damn Wi-Fi this is the pedal one here and I'm along with you know you know you know it's your boy facing a place signing out thank you for coming thank you for listening appreciate you indeed baby and we are out this time have a great week, motherfucker. Ah.